Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. My name is Audrey Zorik, director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church. If this is your first time, we want to welcome you and invite you to come back each and every Sabbath for a new program where we learn how to connect with God through different stories, songs, and activities. And if you are a regular, we want to welcome you back. I am so happy that you decided to join us today. Now today is a special day. In addition to being Sabbath, and we have a special program prepared for you, it's also 4th of July. Whoa, what a celebration. It is a different 4th of July this year because we can't go out to par for parades, we can't go out for uh, fireworks, but it is 4th of July, and I hope that you guys get to celebrate 4th of July at home with mom and dad too, okay? Now, speaking of celebration, today, being 4th of July and being Sabbath, we are going to invite someone to be here and celebrate Kids Connection with us. So, and let's call out his name. You know who I'm talking about. It's been a while since we haven't had a kid here with us. So, kid, kid, come on out. Oh, here's kid. Hello, kid. Good to see you. Wow, I'm so happy that kid is here with us today at Kids Connection. It has been a while since last time we saw you, kid. We miss you so much, kid. We've been taking Kid to visit you guys, to visit some of the kids, and, and we've been driving him around. But Kid actually uh, hasn't been here at Kids Connection, but today is a special day. I'm happy that you're here with us today, Kid. Welcome to Kids Connection. Do you guys miss Kid? Do you miss being here? Me too. Kid, there are a lot of kids out there that really miss being with you and hugging you, Kid. But don't worry. We pray that all this goes away soon and we get to spend some time with Kid and here at Kids Connection. Right, Kid? Excellent, excellent. Today, I'm happy because it's Sabbath, because you guys are here, I'm here, Kid is here, and what about if we start singing our song of the day together? Yes? Let's get our program started and we'll be talking about a couple things right after the song. So get up, let's start moving and sing our song of the day. Me! 
If God is for us, who can be against us, right? That was an amazing song. We had so much fun singing that song right here at Kids Connection. Hopefully you guys got to sing it at home too and have fun. Now, I'm gonna invite you to close your eyes, bow your heads so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another Kids Connection program. Thank you for your love and for your protection. We ask that you be with each boy and girl as we listen to this program today. And may everything that we do here be only to glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wonderful. Now, let me ask you something. Have you ever found something that was lost and you rebuilt that thing? Kid? Have you? Yes, I have done that too. One time I found a toy that I had lost long, long, long time ago. And I had to clean that toy, fix it, and then I could play it again with that toy. But after that, it was so much fun. Well, in today's missionary story, we're gonna see a story of a, some people in other places in the world where they found something that was abandoned and they are now trying to rebuild what it was abandoned for a long time and our offerings are actually going to help them rebuild something that they found let's watch our missionary story these ruins used to be a beautiful church now this place has been claimed by plants but hope is not gone just like these plants the Seventh-day Adventist Church took root in this country nearly 100 years ago. In 1926, the first Adventist missionaries to Liberia, R. Helbig and E. Flammer, arrived. A year later, these German missionaries established Liberia's first Adventist church. I started going to church here in 1989 by my, uh, my late father, who was once a deacon of the church. He used to carry me to church when I was a little and brought the school here and they encouraged us, the young children from the church, to come here and go to school. There I was in the school and then he talked to me uh, to join the baptismal class in the church. So at that time I used to come, with, come to church by my dad, but I was not too regular. But from his effort, I was able to become beings and become a member of the church. After Elder May was baptized, the first Liberian civil war erupted. Political and military conflict forced many church members to flee. During the war, both the church and the school were burnt down by rebels. We could hear gunshot. Yeah, we could hear gunshot. So those who left behind gave us the information that your church is broken down, is being burnt. A place which was once a blessing and a source of joy was now reduced to ruins. But after the conflict subsided, a faithful group worshipped in the only area that survived the destruction. To this day, they joyfully worship together and are confident that if the place is rebuilt, the congregation can be restored to what it once was. Sadly, this small group's funds are limited. It would take a miracle for them to reconstruct even a portion of the building. If I had money, I would do it on my own. With the congregation that we have here, we are not able to even face one structure here. So my anticipation is for the World Church to come to our aid so that this place can be rebuilt. Your 13th Sabbath offering will help rebuild the birthplace of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Liberia, where a place of worship and a school can be established again. Please pray for God's people in Liberia so that this dream can become a reality. Thank you for your support of the 13th Sabbath offering this quarter. Let's remember the missionaries in our prayers as they continue to find places and to build churches to worship God and share the love of God with other people. Thank you so much for your support. Now, today, I'm gonna share a story with you. A story of a boy. There was a boy named Marcus. Marcus was seven years old. And Marcus really, really liked candies. Do you like candies? I like candies. 
Do you like chocolate? Do you like cake? Do you like ice cream? <gasps> ice cream is so good, especially now with a hot day as it is, right? A nice cup of ice cream is awesome. So Marcus liked candies. And one day, mom and dad said, Marcus, we're gonna go somewhere and you're gonna stay here with your older brother. But remember, don't eat too much candy. When mom and dad come back, we are going to tell you how much candy you can have. Mom and dad left. They went to do some, uh, to run some errands. And when they left, Marcus was looking at a big jar, this big jar of candy. And Marcus was thinking, oh no, why can't I eat this candy? They are so good. Maybe I can eat just one. So Marcus disobeyed mom and he opened the candy and he ate it. Oh, it was so good, so yummy. And Marcus finished that candy and he said, oh, but this is so good. Why doesn't mom and dad want me to eat the candy? So I'm going to eat just one more, just one more candy. And, and he grabbed another candy and he opened and he ate another candy. Oh, no, 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 this is wrong. But wait, why is it wrong? Candy is so good. No, I can't, I, I, it can't be wrong to eat candy. It can't be wrong. Why is mom and dad not letting me eat all this candy? I'm gonna eat one more because this is so good. Then he opened another candy and he ate that candy again. And uh, he couldn't control himself. And after that, he opened another candy and he ate that candy again. And one more, and one more, and one more. And Marcus ate almost the entire bowl of candies. Oh, whoa! As soon as he realized that there were only a few candies left on the bottom of that candy bowl, Marcus said, Wow, mom and dad asked me not to eat the candies. And I ate it almost the whole thing. But Marcus kept thinking, why I, why is, why is mom, mom and dad telling me not to eat the candies? If candies is so good, it's so sweet, why are they telling me not to eat it? I can't believe that mom and dad are, don't, don't let me do something that is, is so good for me. Good, candy is good, Marcus thought. All of a sudden, Marcus started feeling a little funny feeling on his stomach. And Marcus didn't know what it was. And Marcus said, oh, maybe if I eat a couple more candies, it'll, it'll help my stomach. But his stomach started making this sound. And Marcus, he didn't know what it was. And ow, 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 it's hurting. Oh no, my stomach is hurting. I, I'm gonna drink some water. And he grabbed some, a big cup of water and he drank that water and all that water didn't make him feel any better. And he said, I'm gonna drink some juice and he got a cup of juice and he drank juice and it didn't help at all. All of a sudden, Marcus started feeling dizzy. And he was dizzy and his stomach was hurting and he couldn't stand up. So Marcus lay down and all of a sudden, he hears something. The door opened and mom and dad came home. Oh no, mom and dad are home and mom and dad walked in and they saw Marcus 
on the couch, laying down with his hands on his stomach and with a face like he's in real pain. And mom and dad knew exactly what had happened. They turned around and they looked, they looked at the bowl of candies and it was almost empty. And they said, Marcus, what did you do? And Marcus said, Mom and Dad, I ate all the candies. Marcus, we have to take you to the hospital now because of all the candy that you ate. And Mom and Dad got Marcus in the car and they drove him to the hospital. While at the hospital and the doctor was looking at Marcus, Marcus, the doctor said, Marcus, why did you eat all those candies? And Marcus said, Doctor, I don't know why I couldn't eat the candies. If they were so good, I couldn't resist them. I didn't know why mom and dad was, they were telling me not to eat it. And the doctor said, you know Marcus, just because we think something is good, it's up to us to obey. Mom and dad are going to tell you what's right and what's best for you. And sometimes it may sound a little harsh and we may think that mom and dad don't like us. But you know what, Marcus? They know what's best for you. And if they told you not to eat the candy, it's because they knew what could have happened to you. And here you are seeing the doctor because of all the candy that you ate. The doctor gave him some medicine and to make his stomach feel a little his stomach to feel a little better, and they went home. When they got home, Marcus said, Mom, Dad, I am so sorry that I ate all those candy. I didn't know that you were looking out for my best. I didn't know what too much candy would do to me. And I thought that you just didn't want me to eat any candy at all. You know, kids, in today's lesson, we are going to learn something about the Bible, a story in the Bible, that God gave some people the freedom for, for them to choose what they wanted. A couple, to be more exact. exact. A man and a woman. And God said something to them, and God, but God also gave them the freedom to choose. And this is something that God gives us. God tells us what's right, what's wrong, and He let us choose. Because remember what we talked about last week? Our lives is full of choices. We have to decide everything. I had to decide to be here today and do the Kids Connection program. It's all about choices and you chose to be here sitting on your couch, looking at your computer or TV or your mom's phone and watching the program today. This was all done because you chose. Now, having the right choice is hard. Sometimes we may look at something and think that something is really good and it can't be wrong. Why something that good can be wrong? Well, the same way that Marcus chose something that he thought it was good, but it turned out to be bad for his stomach because he ate too much, sometimes we do the same thing. We choose something thinking that we're choosing the right thing, but it's actually not. Let's pay attention to our story today and see what happened to this man and this woman as they chose the things by themselves and when God allowed them to make those choices. So now I'm going to invite you to sing our song of the day with us. And kid, come on out here, kid. Let's sing our song of the day together again as we finish our program.
Dear Jesus, thank you so much for loving us and for giving us the freedom of choice. Help us to choose right each time and may everything that we do be to, be to glorify your name. Help us to know what's right and what's wrong. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for participating in another Kids Connection program. Uh, Kid just went out to get a friend of ours and because it is 4th of July weekend, we have a little, kid, come on out here. We have a little friend. Here, let me show, let me show the kids. All right, so it is 4th of July, and this is Rosie. Do you guys remember Rosie, how tiny she was? Well, look at her. She's a little bit big now, and uh, we have her dressed up as 4th of July. She's ready to celebrate 4th of July. Today's 4th of July. Um, and I hope that you guys do something fun at home too, celebrating 4th of July. Dress up with the American flag, or take some pictures, Send us those pictures. We'd love to see you guys. We'd love to get in touch. Our email is bbkidsconnection at gmail.com. Okay, kid? Are you going to celebrate 4th of July today, kid? Are you going to dress up? Kid is going to dress up. He's going to put an American flag. He's going to put an American t-shirt and, and maybe a hat. Wait, do we have a hat that big? Whoa, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but let us know what happened. Let us know how you guys celebrate 4th of July, okay? Ask mom and dad to send us an email and send us a note. We would love to hear to read your note here on Kids Connection here in the air, okay? Wonderful. Now, also, I want to give a shout out. Uh, mom got in touch with us this week. And kid, someone turned six yesterday. And mom sent us a note saying that Jacob Jacob turned six years old yesterday. Happy birthday, Jacob. Uh, we also have Kid that is scheduled to come and visit you. So Jacob, get ready. One of these days, Kid is gonna come by and he's gonna say hello. I'm gonna drive Kid. Tomorrow, Kid is actually doing something. Today, this afternoon, he's, going, he's doing a ministry. He's helping other places, so we can't go there. But don't worry, one of these days we're gonna touch with mom and we're gonna drive kid to your place. And you guys, if you want kid to come and visit you, kid, are you happy to visit the kids? Are you happy to visit all the boys and girls? Kid is super happy and I'm so excited to drive kid to your house. So let us know, we'll drive over there, we'll say hello from a distance, we'll take some pictures, we'll have Rosie with us in the car, we'll have Rosie say hello to you too, okay? So come back next week for another Kids Connection program. I love you guys, I miss you guys so much, and we'll see you next Sabbath. Thank you for watching, bye-bye, bye-bye. Hi, good morning kids, welcome to our program. We're happy that you're joining us this morning, this Saturday morning. We're ready to praise God and learn more about God, and I'm sure you're gonna love today's lesson. Before we begin, why don't we start with a word of prayer? Let's bow our heads. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful 
because you have shown us in many ways that you love us. Thank you for your love and for your protection. Please bless us during this lesson so that we can learn more about you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So today, we're not going to be studying about Samson like we did last week, but the stories are kind of similar in a way. And I wanna know if you can find how are they similar. So I'm gonna ask you to go and grab your Bible. Can you go and grab your Bible? And we're gonna to go to Genesis, first book of the Bible, right at the beginning, right where it all started. So let's go ahead and open Genesis 1.1. And I read, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Wow, so nothing was on earth. And out of the nothing, psh, everything was created. Imagine that. That must have been amazing to watch. How this was a blank canvas and suddenly colors starting to appear in different forms and shapes. You know, the story of the beginning, it's such an amazing story and I invite you to read it throughout the week. But today we're not gonna focus on chapter one. I'm gonna go ahead and jump you all the way to chapter two, where humans were created. And let's go ahead and read Genesis 2, 8. The Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden. He put in the garden the man he had formed the Lord God made every kind of tree grow out of the ground. The trees were pleasing to look at. What is your favorite tree? Do you have a favorite tree? I love trees that are wide and tall and that you could climb on them. Those are my favorite kind of trees. The Lord God made every kind of tree grow out of the ground and the trees were pleasing to look at. Their fruit was good to eat. There were two trees in the middle of the garden. One of them had fruit that let people live forever, and the other had fruit that let people tell the difference between good and evil. So we have here Eden being a perfect place. How? How big do you think Eden was? That's actually a very interesting question. Do you think Eden was like a city? Or do you think Eden was probably like a whole continent, the size of a whole continent? You know, I've heard like a lot of different theories of how Earth used to be. Some say that all the continents used to be together as one piece of land. And then, you know, after the years and earthquakes and everything um, happened, they started to separate. I don't know, that's a theory. You probably know something that I don't know. Would you like to share it with us? Or probably share it with your family? How do you think Eden was? Was it a small city? Was it a continent? Was it a big piece of land? Probably that's why Adam and Eve could just roam like anywhere they wanted to be. They could probably travel from one place to another. Probably they didn't have a house. They would just be wandering around and finding new places. I don't know. There's so many thoughts about it. And why don't you share your thoughts? But the interesting thing, it says that in the middle of the garden, there were two trees. One tree, it's gonna let you live forever, but the other one is gonna let you know the difference between good and evil. So let's stop there for a sec. Because what, I don't see a big difference. One is gonna let me live forever, and the other tree is going to let me know what is good and what is not right. So that sounds like a kind of good option. Hmm, hold on to that thought there, okay? Probably you already are wondering what decision you would have made because remember, at that point, they were just given an option. They didn't know what could happen if you take one option or the other. 
Hmm. So that is a very interesting question. So I have a little experiment for you. You can go ahead and grab some water. Mm. This water, it's actually purified water. Let me try it, okay? Mm. It tastes really good. What is the good of water? You know, water is actually very good because it keeps you hydrated. I grew up in a city that was that is extremely hot, so water it was something that you must have, and you I would drink like water over and over and over again because dehydration was a very common thing among kids. So I would always make sure that I was drinking water. Water is delicious, and it helps our body flow some things that need to flow. It helps with our digestion so that our stomach can do its function. It helps us keep hydrated. It helps us, you know, sometimes we have that thirst because our body is needing the water. So probably you have some other things that water is good for. Do you want to share your ideas? What do you think water is good for? Yeah, I'm sure you have a lot of ideas. So imagine you're given a glass of water like this one. And they tell you, here, take this water and drink as needed. Oh, thank you very much. I'm going to treasure this water because this is the only glass I have. If I need more, I'm going to have to go back and, you know, get some more water. Probably it's going to cost me. So use your water wisely. But then you're given another option. You have never seen a color, never in your life. Imagine that. So they tell you, you know what? I have something right here that will turn your water into green. Green? What does green mean? Well, green is a color that you have never seen before. Oh, I've never seen that color? <gasps> Wow, that is amazing. What if, what if color brings a different sense of life? What if color will show me something else? And they tell you there's a little bit of a downside of that option. If you want to drink this water into green, you can never drink the water again because it's going to be contaminated. Mm, but green sounds like fun. It sounds like a good color. But you know, I also need my water. Do I want to see the color? Or do, want, do I want to keep drinking the water? You know, the, last week we did the story of Samson. Samson had a choice. And all the Bible is about choices. It doesn't mean that there's no choice. There's always a choice. God always presents us with the option but at the same time he tells us if you take this option i know the beginning from the end and that is not going to take you to the right place i know sometimes it's hard for us to understand that sometimes we can't understand how something can just be wrong we see things in life that Probably it's not that bad if I try it. But you know what? If we trust in God, we know that He already knows the end of it. And God already knew that once sin contaminated our lives, it was going to ruin us. You know, sin destroys our lives. Sin makes something beautiful that God created into something that fades away, something that doesn't live forever. So whatever looks beautiful and everything, and we say, this is the best thing I have ever seen, and yes, it brings me a lot of fun to do this. One day, the fun will go away, because that is a problem with sin. Sin does not live forever. So let's go back to our water, and let's say that one day we're just tired of seeing water. And we say, you know what? 
I just think this water is just too plain. I just think that it needs color. I, I want to try just a little bit of water. I'm not going to try a lot of color. I'm just going to try one drop. Probably if I do drop one drop, I'll still be able to drink it. So we go ahead and we let that one drop into our lives because we wanted to know how it would look like. Do you think that the color will ever look the same? Let's see. It's just gonna be one drop. Oh, that was kind of more than a drop, but. Look at how the water is starting to mix. I'm not shaking it. I'm not doing anything. The water was on the surface but the more time the color remains in the water, it starts moving and moving and moving inside the water. And suddenly there's very few spaces that we see clear. All the other ones are already filled with color. And this has taken us probably like 30 seconds and it's already almost, and I haven't shaken the water yet. So here is the water, and this is how sin starts getting into our lives. You know, one small drop will contaminate the whole water. One small choice that we do contaminates our life. The choice is there. You have the choice. You're free to decide what you would like to do. But God told them, if you decide to go and try the other fruit, you cannot live here. And that is where the saddest, sto the saddest story of humankind begins. The journey of walking away from God every time farther and farther and farther away. But you know what? God gives us a choice. God gives us the choice every day. Even in this contaminated world, He still gives you the choice. And I want to ask you this morning, can we do choices that will bring us closer to God? Can we make choices that will choose to be with God? I don't know what that decision is going to be. I don't know where are you going to go with God this today. But I know that if we ask God for his guidance, he will take us to the right place. Let's bow our heads. Our Father in heaven, thank you, thank you because you have given us choices. Thank you because we have the opportunity to choose which direction we want to go. Thank you because you have also given us guidelines on how to follow you. Thank you, God, for this day, and please bless each of the kids today so that they can always follow your steps and make wise choices that will glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you guys for coming this morning. Uh, to our section of Kids Connection. We are very happy to have you and we hope to see you next week, okay? Bye!